Hello, it's Leah Zalems here from Z Axis Leadership Consultancy, and I am here to give you a brief review on this wonderful little book, Five Things You Can Do <clears throat> to Engage More Girls in STEM by Dr. Janine Bakehausen, and she is the founder and the inspirer of a of Tech Girls Movement, and that is a a uh, series of programs and initiatives to help girls at school in that precious 7 to, to 15 years of age age group to discover and explore their own leadership capabilities and indeed to create a project from woe to go to solve a problem that matters to them and they get mentored, they get an opportunity to pitch, and then um, some of them even get a chance to go over to the US to then pitch in a, uh, in, in that, in a, over there. So it's a wonderful initiative that uh, Janine has been running for some six years now, and indeed this year she was awarded the Honorary Australian Award and uh, very, very justly uh, deserved. So this little book she pronounced, little book, why do I call it a little book? Because she's packed a punch into not many words. And uh, that, I, once I opened it, I really couldn't put it down. Five things you can do to engage girls in STEM. She goes into exactly why this is a problem, that there is not enough girls choosing science and, and technology subjects in schools at university and therefore our pipeline of uh, STEM trained and educated girls is very small and that's impacting our innovation pipeline and the whole gender parity situation in our science and tech industries and government and in our environment. So Janine does a great job of summarising the research and the facts uh, that support that and uh, that are leading up to this is a problem and why this is a problem. And she also talks about some of the challenges that girls face from a very early age and the impact of our language and the words we use as parents, as teachers, as mentors, because from uh, it is evident that a lot of girls are making decision already by the age of six that they are not suited to do maths and science subjects and if they don't think they're going to be good at it they don't pursue it so it's a massive issue it's a massive issue and requires massive action and janine is uh, definitely um doing a lot here in australia to uh fix that problem now one of the things that stands out for me uh, in one of the stories here about one of the young girls that uh, ended up being very successful was that she actually didn't think that she was going to be any good at it. So she said yes to the program and then she said no. And it was only because her mother persisted. Her mother was one of those pushy mothers that said, come on, you're going to do this, that she did it. And thank goodness she did do it because she actually went on to win and inspire an enormous uh, ripple effect of the work she did. And it just struck me how important it is that there are times when it's definitely important for us as women, as adults, as mothers, as mentors, as friends, to be a little bit pushy when our kid maybe just doesn't want to do something because... Um, yeah, it was just a really good example of that. Um, the other example that stood out was another uh, uh, young girl who um, had started in the program and got going with their product and then they didn't have the confidence, they didn't think it was good enough to be on show in the bigger environment against other um, innovators and other teams and but when they got there to the expo and saw what was there they thought oh we could have done this we could have really done this and uh, and that stood out for me as well um and no doubt um those girls have taken that learning on board and next time they hear that imposter voice that says um 
I'm not good enough or what I've done isn't good enough or I am not, I can't do this, maybe there's going to be a different uh, decision uh, that they will take uh, next time. And of course, um, that's not only for young girls, is it? It's the imposter syndrome tends to be something that stays with us and those voices can actually get louder the older we get if we don't learn the tools and strategies to deal with them. But um, yes, a brilliant read. Um, Janine, you've really packed a punch uh, with this. And um, the last thing I do want to uh, acknowledge here, and this is your um, AEIOU, the five things that we actually can do um, to engage more girls in STEM. And A is for autonomy, E is for ethos, I is involvement, O for otherness and U for usness. And I particularly like the way you have designated otherness as a thing and then usness as a thing. And they're two separate entities and equally important. But we must have the autonomy of me, of I, of I am. Absolutely, don't we? We absolutely need that. And we absolutely need to have the otherness and then the togetherness of the usness. Uh, so I think you've done a really, really great job of bringing these um, difficult and often complex uh, human humanness, the elements of being human uh, to play here. So I recommend that um, everybody go and grab a coffee, go grab a copy of this, one for themselves and one for a friend, or perhaps you've got a daughter or someone who is, uh, is starting school and we want to be able to know what we can be doing to give these girls every chance at choosing the science and technology uh, subjects and, and the path to innovation for themselves. And you can get this at Janine's website, so www.janinebakehausen.com. And uh, I encourage you all to take the, uh, the ideas, the concepts, the learnings on board, and together we really can inspire that next generation of girls to believe in themselves, to lead themselves, and make better decisions and different decisions, more empowering decisions about their education and career choices. So thank you, Janine, for all you do. Thanks very much for watching.